So welcome to Garden Masterclass. Um, Garden Masterclass is run by myself, Annie Guilfoyle and Noel Kingsbury. Um, and we started this about four years ago, uh, the idea being to hold live events all over the British Isles and into mainland Europe um, in interesting gardens, nurseries, different venues um, with the very best people from the industry, from garden design, horticulture, landscape architecture, garden history, um, nursery owners, plants people. Um, and um, that's been all going tremendously well. But of course, this year we've had to um, postpone a lot of our events due to the dreaded COVID virus. So um, we've now started offering a lot more online. Uh, we have our uh, online free talks on YouTube, on the YouTube channel, and we have pay to view videos on Vimeo. Um, for all the information on up and coming webinars and anything that we've done or are about to do, you need to go to our website, which is www.gardenmasterclass.org. Um, and also on the website is our email address, which is gardenmasterclass at gmail.com. Um, and you can email us for any questions or if you'd like to be on our mailing list. Um, and we send out usually about two newsletters a month just to keep you updated uh, with what's coming up, current news, uh, what's new and anything exciting to tell you. Great, thanks Annie. Um, so these, this YouTube uh, broadcast is a recording of one of our Thursday garden chats which happened at six o'clock London time every Thursday which was a weekly continuation of the five day a week broadcasts we ran during lockdown. Now, we do these for free uh, because we feel it's important they're kept free for people on furlough, students, people on low income, um, and uh, people indeed in poorer countries. Uh, we don't want to charge for them, which does mean that if you can afford to give us something to contribute towards our running costs and our time, that will be very much appreciated. So there is a, a donations button on the online page uh, of our website, gardenmasterclass.org. So enjoy this particular recording. A recent feature of life in many urban centres has been the arrival of the pop-up garden, which is essentially a living horticultural version of installation art, which could be there from one day to many months to be semi-permanent. Daryl Moore of Cityscapes in London commissions garden designers and artists to work together to create these installations. Uh, so, over to Daryl. So we, we were looking around at these spaces, making inquiries about them, looking at meanwhile uses for these spaces and how we could create kind of garden spaces within them. So we sort of worked on, on this idea and we uh, sort of formalized cityscapes into a not-for-profit social enterprise. And we teamed up with the uh, South Bank and Bankside Cultural Quarter. They're an organization that sort of brings together all the major players on the South Bank there from like the Tate Gallery, the National Theatre, all, the, all of those sort of institutions that string along the river there. And we spoke to all of these, uh, these different organizations and we talked to them about ideas of doing um, garden installations. Uh, They're all very receptive to the idea. They all actually really liked uh, the idea of gardens and uh, we sort of developed a number of proposals with them, some, uh, some which were realized and some which weren't. So that was the kind of the basic genesis of, of how we you know, how we began so bringing these things together and uh and then in 2012 we we actually started doing projects uh so we kicked off with three projects in that year yeah but you're i mean obviously now people have heard you speak your you, your accent is not uh it's not a london accent we're hearing there so so your background prior to to um to starting this um, what you know you're originally from new zealand aren't you i am yeah yeah and 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 we did you what did you study horticulture design? What what's your sort of previous background before um, coming over to the UK? Um, I have a number of different backgrounds uh, in mechanical engineering, sound engineering, uh, working in the music industry for a long time, and then studying yeah garden design yeah mm, mm, mm. yeah fantastic. So um, do you want to um, to do you want to share the screen and and yeah. um, and show us more about what you do thank you okay 
Okay, can we see that? Yeah, we can, perfect. Good, okay, so I'm gonna take you through a number of projects. There's a variety of different sorts of things on here. It'll explain some of the sort of things we do in the strategies and reasons why we do them. So Cityscapes, it's about bringing new dynamic approaches to the urban environment, thinking about how it's designed, managed, managed and inhabited. And we do this through sort of temporary and permanent projects. So we do pocket parks as well as kind of installations. We do events. We do a number of different things, as you'll see when I run through the projects. Uh, we wanted to do this because we wanted to put uh, garden design, landscape design and horticulture really in the public realm and highlight it as a creative discipline. So alongside other creative disciplines like architecture and, and, and various of the other art forms. So we wanted to sort of highlight that it is a really creative practice and that it should be sitting alongside these with equal merit. As I said, we were looking at sort of uh, empty spaces, underused spaces, and we were looking at how we could create these uh, into, or transform these into interesting multifunctional spaces so that people can enjoy them, plants can enjoy them, biodiversity. So it's about ecology, economy, and social sustainability. Uh, it's very much a collaborative process what we do. We work with a lot of different uh, designers, artists, and cultural organizations. Some of the projects we invite people in to do the design work, some of them we do ourselves, but it's really about collaboration. It's sort of collaboration, not competition, because we believe that's the way that we can really come up with a lot of interesting ideas and approaches to different types of spaces. And we work with a lot of different kind of partners, including councils, uh, business improvement districts, who are these third party bodies in between sort of councils and private enterprise and they sort of uh, they charge local businesses a certain fee every year which they then put back into projects in the local community so it improves the community for everyone that lives there works there and visits there and we work with community groups and various other sorts of organizations people like network rail and transport for london as well so quite a wide range of stakeholders uh, that we're working with um, but basically, the key thing is about, you know, bringing, bringing people and plants together in the urban environment. So on to the first project we did in 2012. Uh, as I said, we worked with the South Bank and Bankside Cultural Court, and one of the organisations that were part of that was the London Eye. Uh, so we spoke to them and they were very keen to, for us to do a garden in one of the capsules on the London Eye. So we asked Andy Sturgeon if he wanted to sort of uh, collaborate with us on this and he came up with a design, which as you can see there, involves these tall sort of white columns and uh, a number, lot of plants and trees in there. And what he was aiming for was a kind of uh, an analog of the city outside, because as you go up around the London Eye, you can see all the parks as well as all the buildings. So it's this kind of balance of what London is, the green spaces and the harder sort of architecture going on. So it was a kind of metaphor for that. Um, this was during uh, May in 2012 when Andy was also uh, exhibiting at uh, doing a show garden at uh, Chelsea Flower Show. So he was pretty busy at the time, but managed to squeeze this into his schedule there. Um, also, Andy wanted a soundtrack for this. So being a sound artist, I created one, uh, which was an analog of the process of the wheel going round and the views that you saw outside as well. So it started off with sounds from the immediate South Bank area, of the hustle and bustle, the different uh, sounds going on there. Then when it got up about halfway, it was sounds from Battersea Park about uh, four miles away. And then when we got up to the top, it was sounds from uh, down near East Grinstead, 40 miles away. Uh, so that's the view that you can supposedly see from the top of there. So these sounds transitioned as you went up, basically. The sounds went up as well to further the distance. And then it reversed as it came back down. So it, we had this installation there for one day only. We had to install it overnight. We worked with uh, land uh, landform. Uh, who met, did the build on it there, the contractors. Uh, it was there, we had people going around it during the day and then the next night it had to be taken out. So it was all a sort of a hit and run job, but it was this kind of sudden impact of a garden in a most unlikely space. 
And Daryl, why only one day? Was it is it is it because they didn't want to lose the reven, revenue of, of you know or what what why yeah. it's such a shame? Yeah, it, it is a shame. It runs <laughs> well. Um, yeah, it was just that that's what they offered us basically. So that so that's what we took. And you know, yeah, it was crazy doing it in that sense. But it was it was fine. I mean, uh, the plants Andy was using at Chelsea as well. So it's not like they were you know bought specially for this. It was all being used anyway. So it was all part of it. So then also related to Chelsea that year, um, Tony Hayward and Elson Condy are horticultural installation artists. And at Chelsea that year, the RHS introduced a new category called Fresh, about new ideas for gardens. And they asked uh, Tony and Elson to do an installation there. Um, if you know their work, it's very sculptural, it's very bright, colorful. Uh, and they did uh, this, this uh, installation in the fresh section there. And then after the show, we brought some of these uh, elements to, to create a new garden. And we teamed up here with uh, the Old Vic Theatre. That year they were doing uh, a special project in tunnels under Waterloo Station, uh, where the old Eurostar uh, depot was originally, a train line. And Basically, these were empty tunnels and the theatre took them over to do a lot of uh, sort of more edgy kind of work rather than the, tr the traditional theatre productions they were doing at the, in the main theatre. So this was aimed at a younger kind of audience. There were very, there sort of art installations, performances, all sorts of things going on. And they offered us uh, an empty space there, one of these uh, tunnels here, which was where you first walked into it. It was a dark, damp space, uh, the trains rattling overhead and, uh, and uh, fungus growing in it. So, okay, we thought that's something to work with. Tony and Alison thought about that. They thought in terms of uh, having living, growing matter in there, uh, they, would use, they would grow fungus. So you can't see it in these couple of photos, but there's a video coming next, which you'll probably see it. There was a greenhouse there we installed in there and that uh, was growing mycelium in there. We, they worked with scientists from Cambridge about growing mycelium in there. And then we used these different uh, aspects from their gardens and from some of their other sculptural works to create this kind of garden in this uh, dank, dark place. We used uh, lighting, uh, video, sound and uh, scent. We had a, a scent machine from Penhaligons, the, uh, the famous perfume makers in London here. They gave us a perfume, this perfume uh, <laughs> machine, as it were. And we're pumping out this kind of, uh, almost like a sort of church-like scent. They blended a scent specially for us to sort of match the space and feel of the installation. So the whole thing was a very immersive kind of experience. And for the, I created a soundtrack for it where I made recordings from Chelsea which on Monday, when the Queen does her visit around there, they have a brass band playing. And so I recorded some of that. I recorded a lot of sounds from in the ta uh, tunnel itself. So water dripping, trains rumbling overhead, and mixed it all together and processed it to create this sort of 10 minute long symphony of swelling sounds. So uh, there was really a kind of a, a real feeling you got when you went in there with all of these kind of sensory kind of things that, you know, sort of. Uh, coming at you basically, immersing you within this whole entire realm. Um, this was in situ for five months. It was during the summer when the Olympic Games were on and a lot of cultural institutions shut down over that period when the Games were on and the old Vic did as well. So we actually closed this up for, for a month or so whilst that was going on and then we reopened it. And when we reopened it, the, uh, the fungus that was originally in there that we saw growing had kind of colonized everything. So as you can see in these pictures, there's old sort of trees there and that, which are from Formby, the National Trust property up uh, just up above Liverpool there, where Tony's actually from. And there was all this sort of mycelium hanging off those, so it had kind of colonized the space. It reclaimed the space, we'd intruded into it, but it had kind of come back at us when we, we, we weren't vigilant because it was closed. So that was really nice, sense of things growing. And to add a bit of theater of it, when people came in, we were offering them face masks. Uh, we're all familiar with face masks now, but obviously <laughs> people back then, you know, didn't want them. And we had up signs saying, you know, we can't identify this exactly, so proceed at your own peril, which was a bit of 
of theatre and a bit of fun as well. So, you know, it really makes that whole sort of experience because a lot of things were going on then were like uh, punch drunk theatre and that, or immersive theatre and that. So we were sort of drawing on that sort of uh, aspect of things happening in London at that time as well. Then the next project, uh, I'm sorry, hang on, no, this is, the, so this is the, uh, the video, you'll see that in a bit more detail of what it actually was. Okay, the next project in 2012 uh, was a permanent pocket park, uh, it's a place called Gibbons Rent, which was uh, just a, a neglected alleyway in uh, London Bridge area. Uh, the alleyway is used for antisocial behaviour at night, there was a lot of people around. The area is part residential, part commercial, so there's offices and people living in the area. Um, so basically the idea was to transform this into a little green oasis. We worked with the Architecture Foundation on this, uh, also Southwark Council and the local business improvement district called Team London Bridge. So they were the main kind of partners in it. And we got in uh, Sarah Eberly, uh, you know, well-known uh, garden designer, uh, best in show winner at Chelsea, etc. And she collaborated with an architect called Andrew Burns, who's actually in Australia. The Architectural Architecture Association held a competition with three uh, young Australian practices and Andrew won it. So they collaborated on this together. Uh, Andrew came up with this sort of spatial arrangement, which was a sort of harlequin ground pattern, which sort of creates compression and expansion as you move through it, because it's a very narrow space. So it gives you a different sort of sense of space as you move through it. Sarah got these huge uh, concrete uh, pipes, which we used as planters. And that was the basic structure of it. But the idea was that, and it still is, that uh, the community bring in pots as they like. They bring in their own plants. They can use it how they want. So it's continuously changing. It's sort of a continuous form of engagement with the local community. So one year, um, one of the businesses organized a sunflower growing competition. The local school do Christmas carols there. So it's very much community space. Uh, I've got a short video which will show you the sort of transformation that took place there. <laughs> Oh. 
It's quite a nice borrowed landscape, as you can see there, the shard in the background is a focal point, so that's quite nice. Um, but one of the important things about this project was uh, we worked with St Mungo's Homeless Charity, and they have an initiative called Putting Down Roots, where they train homeless people with horticultural skills to get them back into the workplace and set them up as kind of sole traders. And uh, so they helped us on the build with this and they've got the maintenance contract for it uh, and we've worked with them ever since on an, a lot of other projects as well. So they're, they're a really great team and uh, it's really an important relationship we have there. Right, the next project was in uh, 2013 and uh, we did a project called the Remix Garden where the idea was we took a show garden and remixed it into new gardens. So basically the garden here at Chelsea is by uh, Andrew Wilson and Gavin McWilliam. It was done for Cloudy Bay and they kindly donated everything to us uh, after the show and we used the space at Oxo Tower Wharf. Now Oxo Tower is, is a big building on the Thames there, right on, on the river there. It's quite iconic architecture. But in the back there, there's a, uh, a courtyard space, which as you can see is very bleak really. It's just hard, uh, you know, it's not very inviting. The building itself has a lot of different sort of businesses and a lot of residents there. So it's a mixed community. And this is the kind of space that they have to sort of look out on. So we wanted to sort of envisage how the space could be transformed in different ways. So we uh, got four young designers involved to come up with four different designs. So it's reimagining the space using the same materials in four different ways. So it's like you would remix a song, but remixing a garden. Um, to sort of uh, get them thinking about the space and the spatial design, we did a workshop with Siobhan Davies Dance, who are also local. They're a local dance company, and we worked with a choreographer getting to think about spaces because if you think about gardens obviously gardens are about plants but they're also about people and people using spaces and moving through spaces so i wanted to investigate that relationship between moving through space of a garden and the way that dancers and choreographers move through space as well so here we're thinking about cross-disciplinary ways of thinking about space because garden design is a spatial practice as well as a you know a horticultural practice so we did a day sort of session there with a, a choreographer called Charlotte Spencer. And the designers did various exercises. And basically the exercises were thinking about ways of uh, approaching space. One is about how you sort of move through an immersive space and the other about is how you create focal points in spaces. So the designs we actually came out with at the end, two of them were very immersive and two of them were very much about looking at sort of things in a space. So the first design was by John Sims. As you can see in the central image there, it's a garden in a box. It's contained. So his kind of narrative was that everything being boxed up at Chelsea brought down into this space, kind of dropped down, and it was a sort of starting to spill out from there. Um, very sort of uh, concise, clear kind of thinking about that and how it sits within that space. Next one was spreading out more. So basically each garden was in place for three, months, uh, three weeks and then we had a three day turnaround period to take it down and build the next one. Uh, again, St Mungo's were working on 
with us on this and we worked with garden link contractors. So this is by Anushka Feiler and it very much occupies the whole kind of space. Um, we allowed each of the designers to bring in sort of an element of their own choice as well. Obviously when a musician is producing a, a record or remixing a, rec a song, they bring in their own elements as well. They may bring in their own vocals or drum beats or something like that. So we kind of allowed that. So Anushka brought in these cages. Again, it's very much about bursting out, but it's really bursting out of, of the cages in occupying the whole kind of space there. Uh, Matt Childs, he got these huge water culverts. Uh, they were sort of two meters wide, two meters high, some of them. Uh, again, very much thinking about things erupting out into that space and people moving around through the space. And then Daniel Lobb uh, was very much about containment. Literally, it was in a shipping container. So he created this whole kind of landscape within the confined space of a shipping container. So there again, you can see the elements, you can see the, uh, you know, the, the rammed earth walls that have occurred through all of those, same sort of, the same plants, etc. And the original garden at uh, Chelsea had a stream running through it. And as you can just see in the image here, there is a stream running through that as well. So running through the garden, in the shipping container. Then uh, as a grand finale, uh, we gave the elements all back to uh, Andrew and Gavin, the original designers, to do their own remix of it. Now the RHS were partners in this project uh, with us and so we did an installation at the, uh, the autumn show they had in the Lindley Hall there in uh, Victoria, their headquarters. And Gavin and Andrew really paired it back. So they, we had these hooks, which we had suspended objects, which were moving up and down. And then underneath these large bowls, which had different versions of the same materials. So for instance, the rock had all sort of smaller, you know, smaller sized pebbles and things underneath. The apple tree uh, had apples underneath. The uh, uh, box of flowers there underneath that was all seed heads. So it's just different conceptual versions of the same thing. A very minimalist kind of approach to thinking about that. And I've got a short video here so you get a better idea of how the whole project uh, uh, proceeded.
As you can see at the end there, there was also some of the other elements from, from the gardens, like the cages and the water culverts, because we got each of the four young designers to work with a different nursery to create an installation with them at the show as well. Um, so obviously the project, the project was about thinking about spaces, city spaces, and how they can be reimagined. So using those same materials, they're almost like beta versions of, of how that place could be. Uh, obviously for any sort of tourist in the, that area, it's a very busy area. If they stumbled across them, it was something very unusual and unexpected. And the, all the local sort of residents uh, responded really positively. They're really uh, into the whole project and, and watching us build it each time and talking with us about it, telling us which their favorite one was and why. So again, it is like testing a space, thinking about how it could be designed, how we could be bringing plants into those kinds of spaces. Um, this was one we did with the British Library. We worked with Todd Longstaff Gown, uh, and they wanted an installation in their uh, uh, plaza outside the, uh, the library building itself. They never ever had anything out there. And they had an installation on the Georgians inside, sort of what the Georgians did for us in terms of what their legacy is for today. And obviously gardens was one of them. So. Uh, Todd is uh, a landscape architect, but he's also a garden historian. So he drew on his kind of knowledge and created this kind of, uh, this pavilion. Basically, they did a lot of pop-ups back then in that period. They used to create these kind of garden installations, which were just up for a short time. So this was that kind of idea. And he created this, uh, this pavilion based on a unrealized hawk small design. And uh, we created, he created this uh, sculpture on top of, of George, uh, George the first there that was made by a set designer who worked on Derek Jarman films. And uh, then inside there was a little puto, uh, which was to represent the new uh, George, the Williams baby that, that was born just at that kind of time. So it was a bit of a kitsch kind of link between these two things. But obviously that's, you know, the link that was going on in the, uh, in the uh, exhibition itself. So uh, this was in place for sort of uh, five months, basically over winter months, which obviously is quite hard for, uh, for, having plants outside so a lot there's mainly just sort of shrubbery there uh the the covering of the actual pavilion there was uh was 
actually artificial buxus. Todd had done the redesign of the gardens at Kensington Palace, and this was used there to screen it off whilst they were doing it. So it was about reusing these materials, and then they went back to the Royal, uh, Royal Estate there to be used for other projects again. Reuse is really something that's really important for us. I mean, as with the Remix Garden project, which was about reusing show gardens, because show gardens can sell from these such a waste that these things get, you know, a lot of money is spent for a week to be in situ and then things are thrown away. We wanted to show that show gardens could be reused for that. So recycling is a, it's a kind of theme that runs through us. And with the Remix Garden, all the materials that were uh, used in it were used in community projects afterwards. So that, that's a key thing that it's this whole cycle that we have, this whole life cycle for materials and plants. Uh, this was a project working with Siobhan Davies Dance again, and it was a project with Anushka Feiler once more, and it was working with some young people from the Elephant and Castle area in London, and it was about doing a workshop with them, thinking about how they could create a flexible space, because what's key in city spaces is making sure they're flexible and multifunctional, because there's not just one user group, there are many different user groups, and people respond to these spaces in different kinds of ways. So it was about about getting them to think about uh, about creating a space that could be moved and changed and also that could be used as for a performance space. So basically they spent a week work workshopping with Anushka and Charlotte to uh, create the space uh, and also then to do a performance at the end of it. So this is this empty space here uh, and uh, we worked with Corsica Studios, who are a local kind of arts organization in the area. They do a lot of music events and that, and they've taken over this particular unused space from Peabody Trust, uh, housing uh, state housing association, and they uh, transformed it into a sort of bar entertainment area, and this particular space was the garden area. Uh, this is from the performance and there's a short video to show the sort of performance itself and you see the space a bit more. But basically the idea is that these plants and things, they're all in gabions, they can be moved around, it's a multi-purpose you know, multi space, it can be open, it can be enclosed, it, it, you know, it's really a, dependent on whoever wants to use it in whatever way. <laughs> Thank you. 
So the plants and that came from a show garden at Hampton Court. So again, using materials and plants from show gardens, showing that there should be an afterlife. It should be mandatory basically for all show gardens to have an afterlife. Uh, 2015, we did Greenwood Theatre, which is a, uh, a student theatre in London Bridge. We worked with Team London Bridge, the local uh, business improvement district again. It's used for students from um, King's College medical students, so they were a partner in it. And also there was funding from Network Rail because they were working on London Bridge Station at the time. And they wanted to try and offset some of the biodiversity loss that they were uh, encountering by building the station by uh, funding other projects. So we got funding from them for this. We worked with Joe Swift, the uh, garden designer and uh, gardener's world presenter and uh, Dame Zandra Rhodes, the fashion designer. She lives in the area, so is very keen to sort of uh, see a project like this in the area. She's very much into plants. She lives just around the corner from this. Uh, she's got a fashion and textile museum there, and she's got an apartment uh, above that, a rooftop apartment, where she's got lots of plants as well. So if anyone knows her, her designs, she's very bright and, and herself as well, very bright and bold and colorful. And so she, uh, thought of the idea of using these kind of these colors the, the orange the pink and the blue to really transform the site uh, it's a very dull boring building but by using these kind of colors here you create a real landmark and it becomes a wayfinding uh, station within the local area so it's between Bermondsey Street and Borough High Street which are two kind of quite busy sorts of areas but this makes it a kind of wayfinding path between them and that's very important in cities and dense urban areas to have these kind of things uh, so that people can navigate through these spaces. And this is a quick video to show the, the original. As you can see, that's the original building. And then see the transformation. We worked with GardenLink contractors again on this. We had some local uh, businesses uh, work with us and help us with some of the planting on that. We did a bold planting day with a local school and some mungos putting down roots, do the maintenance on that as well. So again, really a community type project. And that's sort of what it looks like well, last year or so. Uh, things are really grown, it's really developed, it's really well used by the community. Uh, this was an installation we worked with uh, Tony Hayward and Alison Condy again. It was just a, an installation at the Barbican about sort of uh, greening cities, fresh air, living walls. They wanted to do a living wall installation. So we used the greenhouse that was originally in the Majesty project, but uh, Tony and Alison had transformed it by putting stained glass in there rather than just the plain, uh, plain glass. And they created all these different kinds of figures with it again. It's about sort of uh, reverence for nature and greenery within dense urban situations. 
this is a permanent pocket park we did uh, created in to the end of 2018. It's uh, working with the Business Improvement District, Euston Town. It's uh, what's well, in Euston, obviously, and it's uh, they wanted to create a walking route from Regent's Park to Euston Station. The main road there is one of the most polluted roads in Europe, so they did want to try and get people off there and create a kind of green route for them to walk in, in the, through this area. So this was part of that. There was funding from the mayor with uh, air pollution project to try and bring more greening projects to sort of offset the terrible pollution there is in London. So this was the original space. It's a, it's a uh, college space and this is what we transformed it into. There's two different sides. One side is this side is very, uh, very hot and sunny. Uh, the building's windows have uh, reflective, so there's a lot of heat bouncing back from the building as well as coming in from the other side. So it's a very uh, sort of dense uh, grass kind of forb matrix going on there. Very sun loving plants. As you can see, uh, very dense planting. And then the other side is shady, it's got trees. So again, it's a very uh, layered plant community going on there, uh, very different there. So this has been a really successful project. Everyone in the college really likes it. People, it, before the space wasn't usable, now it's been opened up with benches and that for the public to come through. We created a whole transition through both sides by creating pathways through them. So it really brings the public and the community into the space as well as the users from the college there. Again, it's like really wild planting here to really sort of offset the very hard kind of building that's all going on all around there as well. Again, trying to get the benefits of, of wilder planting into, into these dense urban areas. So it's really about sort of that kind of ecological approach to planting in this space. Um, also in the area as part of the same kind of project extending it throughout the area, there's street planters have done, planters on walls, and the entrance to Euston Square Station planters as well. So really trying to green up the area there. Uh, then last year we did a project with Team London Bridge again in, uh, in a tunnel, uh, passenger or foot tunnel through London Bridge Station. There's, there's nothing really in this space. We spoke with Network Rail, they were keen on, on animating it. So we did a project similar to the Remix Garden. We got materials from, this time from a number of different gardens at Hampton Court, and we allocated them to uh, four designers again, four new young designers. And we gave them certain materials, but they, the idea was that they sort of linked basically in the way that uh, there's a surrealist game called Exquisite Corpse, and it's like the, ch the children's game, it's called Pictorial Consequences. It's the same thing, whereby someone has a bit of folded paper, they draw a head, and then the next person draws the torso, the next person draws the, uh, the legs, etc. So no one knows what's coming basically. And we allocated certain materials at the end of each of these gardens that had to link up, so it created to transition through the space there. Uh, these were the first two gardens, uh, Ula Maria's. There is the first one as you're coming in, then it transitions into Caitlin McLaughlin's garden, uh, Alexandra Noble, and then uh, Sarah Wilson's at the end. So they each had different sorts of narratives about the station, about passing through the station, about people in the station, transit, uh, ephemerality, all these sorts of ideas. So each of them had individual narratives which they're expressing and thinking about the space and the station as a whole. Obviously again it's a really surprising space to have a garden uh, or a series of gardens and it really kind of you know engaged people passing through the station and Network Rail were very pleased with it and they've now asked us to design a permanent garden or a series of permanent gardens in there. So uh, I'm working on a design for one which will instigate next year and then the following year there'll be another one. So there'll be two or three permanent gardens in this space. Again, you know, Network Rail were really excited about this and saw how this could sort of work at various stations. So hopefully it's something we'll be dealing with in other stations as well. Uh, just quickly, some projects we've done with the RHS. They've got us to work at a lot of different sorts of shows for them. This was uh, a design show they had. Uh, we did this uh, 
project called the Design Debate Station, which is very much an interactive project. We had a greenhouse with some planting and neon lights inside it. And we had a series of questions on the actual windows there, asking about design, asking about uh, you know, how we can approach things like sustainability and change with plants and with design. And then we got people to respond to them by writing on the greenhouse windows, so graffitiing the greenhouse. So it changed throughout the whole period of the show by getting people's responses to these questions about thinking about how we can be using design and plants for change. Uh, this was at Chatsworth Flower Show the first year. The RHS held it. They asked us to do an installation in the central marquee they had there, which was a big inflatable pavilion based on a Joseph Paxton uh, design. Uh, obviously he was uh, the head gardener at, at Chatsworth and they wanted us to sort of think about uh, what a contemporary sort of take on Paxton's way of thinking would be. And so we sort of were thinking, looking at a lot of um, horticultural technologies from the Netherlands and they're very advanced in, in horticultural uh, tech. We went over, saw some shows, spoke to some people there and we came up with this uh, this installation, which is a big, hanging structure, sort of skeletal structure. There's the plants on there, there's mist to keep the plants alive. There are lights which then reflect off the, uh, the mirror ball, red and uh, blue horticultural lights, so the, showing all the different elements that you need for plants. And then the, it was dropping into a huge seven foot uh, pool at the bottom there, and then sort of evaporating from there again. So just a kind of, a, you know, a very, uh, interesting take to get people thinking about horticultural technology today in the same way that Paxton was thinking about it back in his time. Uh, we curated the Urban Garden Show for the RHS. It was a new show. They wanted to engage a younger demographic at their shows. They wanted to sort of uh, think about what younger people in urban situations who don't have gardens but may have balconies or very small courtyards thinking about the way that they were responding to plants today and also the the craze for house plants which in sort of 2016 was was a massive thing on instagram so we sort of brought together a lot of different uh stall holders we convened lindley hall in a whole different way created installations uh which one was uh, focusing on sort of arid plants and the other was on tropical plants, trying to get people to understand the basic differences in house plants. You know, people are just going out, they're seeing house plants on Instagram, they're going out and buying them without really knowing anything about them. So it's the whole educational aspect of this as well. Uh, the following year, we then used some of the elements from our uh, Chatsworth installation to create sort of uh, central installations within the uh, Lawrence Hall there and again lots of different stall holders plant-based food showing you know the importance of plants to the whole way of life so it's about a whole plant way of, of living basically thinking about plants it's been essential to the way we live our lives particularly in urban situations and then at the third one, we did an installation uh, called Plant Peep Show, where we sort of had this structure like a peep show structure inside the showing plants and flowers, sort of reflecting upon the whole fascination with flowers rather than plants as a whole, the kind of pornography of plants that we get fascinated with flowers rather than thinking about the whole range of things and that plants do ecologically and the whole form of plants and why they take certain kinds of forms. So it was a sort of an exploration of those ideas. Uh, at the other end of the scale, we also do some sort of master planning, working with councils. This was a, a design for Southwark Council, uh, streetscape there. And this was one for Herringay Council in North London, uh, looking at a streetscape around a redeveloped sort of station there that Network Rail had uh, had made. Uh, yeah, had, had done some work on the station because it was going to be used more uh, route out of London. That part of sort of northeast London is becoming uh, a lot more occupied, uh, a lot more things going on around there. It's just down the road from the Spurs studio where there's been huge redevelopment. A lot of that's real gentrification. There's a real problem with that because it displaces existing residents and council estates around there. So we were trying to look at ways that we could create sort of opportunities by creating sort of temporary studios for new local startup businesses for local people to get in there as well. So it's not just about an influx due to gentrification. 
Um, and then this finally is a project we've been working on for a while with the Dutch Embassy. It's to create a uh, river station at Vauxhall on the Thames, uh, a destination pier basically. So we're working with Thames Clippers and uh, basically the idea is to create this kind of uh, huge floating greenhouse is the original idea but basically at the moment it's just a wooden pier it's totally exposed to the elements a lot of people don't use the the river as a form of transport despite the fact that there are these ferries that are going along there and the, the greater london authority and the mayor want to get more people using that as an essential form of transport through london so by creating a destination pier it creates something you know a uh, an idea that could be rolled out across a lot of different pairs across there to encourage people. They can go in there. They're not standing out in the rain. They can have a coffee. It can be a community space. And obviously it's a very uh, horticultural space by using a lot of plants in there. So that's, that's quite a complicated project. Doing things on the river is, is a very, uh, yeah, difficult thing to do. There are a lot of different permissions. A lot of different bodies have jurisdiction over it. So this has been sort of in the pipeline for a while, uh, obviously with, the current situation, everything's on hold, uh, and but we'll see. We'll see if we pick up with it again. I had a meeting with the Dutch embassy at the beginning of the year, sort of talking about it again, but then lockdown. It's kind of all on pause. So, as I say, it's a bigger, longer-term project. So that gives you a kind of an idea of the range of some of the things we do. There's, there's various other things as well. So there's more on our website, but you can get the sort of scope and scale of what we're doing through that. Um, That's wonderful, Daryl. Do you want to come back out of screen yeah. share just so we can, uh, we've got a couple of questions coming in and um, lovely. Um, okay. We have got some questions, but I also I, I've got some questions as well. And, and um, if people want to ask questions, just chat, um, type a question into the chat box and we will we'll ask, ask Daryl. But um, I, I absolutely love what you do because for lots of reasons, really. I love lateral thinking with anything that happens, you know, whether it's with what we do or, you know, but this lateral thinking and, and what, what is so fresh about what you guys do is that there's no bounds. I mean, you know, you've got music, drama, dance, installation, recycling, you know, but under, underneath all of that, like there's it's almost like there's no, no barriers, no bounds, but underneath all of that, there's a very important message, which is fantastic, you know, and that, that is the thing that, you know, it'll stop and it'll make people think and question whether they like it or they don't like it or they don't understand it. But, but you've got this message coming through, which is always really, really important. Um, and I just, you know, I forget, and I actually, I, a couple of those projects I hadn't seen, and I just absolutely take my hat off to you. Um, do you walk around London, you know, on a day to day basis, obviously not at the moment, but do you walk around London sort of looking at little spaces and kind of is your head kind of spilling with ideas of, oh, we could do this, we could do that. I mean, do you find you look at a space so differently because of what you do? Yeah, I mean, we certainly did walk around a lot when we first started. We were looking at spaces and talking to owners of, of pro property owners, you know, to try and see if we could use them that. So, yeah, I do look at spaces all the time and I do always think about, you know, opportunities that exist. And sometimes when people do things with spaces, that's so disappointing, you know, because the potential is, is huge and they, they're, but they're driven by economics, they're driven by all these kind of other factors. So we're really lucky with the partners we work with and, uh, you know they're, they're very keen and and see the importance of these kind of projects so yeah. yeah yeah and with the remix gardens and you may well have said this forgive me if, if i if i missed it how long were, were each of the four remix gardens okay. um up yeah they're three weeks each so good time then three days to deconstruct and re make the next one Great. And also, are you are you uh, not limited? But do you do you do or would you do stuff in other cities? Or are you are you really London based? Or yeah, uh, no, we'd certainly do things in other cities. Yeah, I mean, it's just that this work has pretty much come to us, you know. And we've we, initially we went out and spoke to an awful lot of people, did a lot of networking, and things came about. And then people started approaching us about you know projects. So it's yeah. just with yeah with got you know been busy enough in London but we're certainly happy to do anything to do stuff, yeah and yeah. and in fact as as I was thinking about you know um can people approach you um and if people are watching this or they're watching it again on YouTube um you know are you open to people approaching you and then actually Annie Peckham from London um has put a message it's such interesting projects thought-provoking and important work do you pitch for projects or are you approached 
Um, initially we pitched, we pitched for a lot of things. We went to people and just said, you know, we've got ideas and so we, we proposed to them. Mm -hmm. uh, these days, because we've built up long-term relationships with people, they tend to come back to us to, you know, to do projects. So mm -hmm. it sort of, yeah, it's a variety of things really, but it's mainly projects sort of coming to us these days, yeah, yeah. Or people suggesting them. Yeah. So if designers, horticulturalists, whoever, dance choreographers, you know, uh, artists have got ideas uh, and they happen to be watching this, you know, you're open to, to people coming to you with, with wild and wonderful ideas. Yeah, I guess the, the key thing generally is having a space to do something, having yeah. space and funding to do something. Yeah, yeah. The funding is totally different on every project as well. Right. So, you know, they're, yeah. they're the key things and thinking about the whole process. And, and what about the, sorry, Dakota, just coming there. Um, if, if obviously having spaces, what about fu funding? Where does the, what, where does, uh, yeah, it is, is it the person providing the space has to provide the funding? Um, it depends. It really depends. So, uh, when we work with business improvement districts, as I say, they get funding from businesses and they get grants like from the yeah, yeah. office, people like that. So that's where the funding for those sorts of ones come from. Okay. Um, yeah. it's, it's a variety of different things. Yes. Yeah. Um, and, and yeah, sorry. You did uh, mention about reuse of materials, I, I think, at some point, and you said, you know, we do, we, we do that automatically. But, and that is the obvious question, that with something that is quite short, uh, short term like this, you know, what does happen to materials? I mean, how is everything re reused or recycled or... Um... Yeah, it is. I mean, we either use them in, in, you know, our existing projects or for new projects, or we find community spaces or someone that wants to use them in that. I mean, that's that's got to be taken into consideration at the start yeah. of any project. Yeah. So, yeah. Mm -hmm. And um, with, you, you, you yeah. use this word afterlife, which, you know, is in the, in terms of, so that's the physical afterlife. I was also wondering about the um, the kind of non-physical afterlife, which is with any short-term project, uh, how if, if if it's just there for if it, is it going to be just a nine-day wonder, or are they some way recorded, or what is there any sort of um, yeah afterlife for, for, for projects in, in, in terms of uh, re recording or other other uses made made of recorded material? I mean, obviously we photograph everything. We mm -hmm. Uh, so we, we do document them uh, yeah. some of them you know some of them the surveys done with with people visiting them to get right. to oh, sort of yeah, yeah. Well. So, yeah yeah and with with my sort of sensible hat, hat on i'm looking at some of the remix projects um where you're using you know it's in the public space and you've got you know big sharp heavy objects Health and safety. Um, do you have to? I mean, you must have to jump through hoops of fire to to, to get these things agreed and okayed and ticked in terms of a, a big load of of material sat in a public space. And how difficult is all of that to sort out? It really varies on the projects. I mean, I do spend a lot of time doing risk assessments and yeah. method statements and all the rest. Um, obviously, that's a really important part of it. I mean. With the Remix Garden, we were working with Coin Street Community Builders, and, and they were very open, and they were very, you know, we did all, all the paperwork, and they were, they were happy with everything. So when we're working with in, in stations, if it's Network Rail or TFL, then, then it's a lot more regulated. It's a lot more difficult, you know. Right. So, I mean, it's not difficult. It's just that's part of the design process of finding ways to do things safely. So yeah. that, that, that's, that is what design is as well. And one thing also, you've reminded me that we, we, we've spoken to Tony Hayward and Alison about, about, you know, having them on. And we must, we must, you reminded me, we need to, we need to get Alison and Tony on as well and talk to them yeah, because yeah, yeah. what they do is always so wonderfully outside, you know, it's just brilliant, brilliant stuff. Um, and we were talking to you earlier about you, you've got a book on the go, haven't you? I do. Yeah. 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 Right. And, and, and that and, and, the, and the gist of that is more is that more plant based? What, what's the what's the sort of or what's the brief that you've got there for that? Uh, it's yeah, it's thinking about plants and our relationship to plants, uh, mm -hmm. thinking about the importance of plants. Obviously, with climate change, we're thinking about plant, you know, plants in different ways that everyone's using sort of terms like green infrastructure and all these other sorts of things so in cities. Um, but it's just thinking about the very core things that plants do and thinking about how we can be, you know, creating better relationship with plants, the, the binary division between sort of nature and culture, thinking about how we 
can break that down, what that philosophical tradition is, what the new forms of philosophy and thinking of that are, whether it's sort of object oriented ontology, eco-feminism, queer ecology. There's a lot of different ideas out there now. And then mm -hmm. thinking about sort of more ecological styles of planting, a bit of the history of that, current people doing it. And then about sort of plant science, about where that may actually go, utilizing more ideas about sort of uh, bacteria in the soil, plant and set interactions, how we can be incorporating the contemporary plant science into that in, the, in more sort of granular detail, I guess, as well. Fantastic, fantastic. And a couple of months ago, we had a, we had a bit of a, de a Chelsea debate on, on uh, Garden Masterclass online. Um, what, what are your views and thoughts about the sort of, uh, you know, long-term Chelsea style shows, not just picking on Chelsea necessarily, but, you know, the garden shows that we've got, I mean, they are incredibly wasteful, even though, you know, um, I know the RHS, you know, do try and get people to, to, to stipulate they're going to reuse things. But what, what, what do you think about our, our garden show culture in the more traditional sense of how it's been happened? Yeah, I don't know. I mean, obviously, it is, it's always been this balance, isn't it, about promoting horticulture and getting across mm. to a wide audience through through the media and and the kind of waste that goes on. I mean, you know, that is that is terrible. That's something, you know, it's, so much money is spent for so little time as well. And that's for commercial use, you know, promotion and all these other things. It's all part of the package, obviously, and that, you know, it's, it's a big a big part of what the RHS does, of course, and you know they have been criticised for it, and we've had a lot of debates with them about this. And obviously, we try to engage by using materials from shows, but you know that should be something that is mandatory, really. That yes, the yes. garden has to have that. So that would be the the start. Um, yes, yes. With the whole kind of economic situation and that now, you know, who knows? It's 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 a it's a question as to what you know whether sponsors think that is a valuable thing to do. But you know, hopefully. We, if they do do it, they would see that the real value is the longer term afterlife value. Yeah, yeah. And, and, and before we sort of wrap up, um, Daryl, a, a couple of lovely comments. Wendy over in South Carolina saying, I love the use of recycled objects that are incorporated into the gardens, concrete pipes and, and corrugated metals, etc. And up in Scotland, I love the way that so many different disciplines are used in these projects. And I absolutely agree with her. I think that thing of, you know, bringing together so many different disciplines is so important and, and will have a great effect on the people that are involved and people who are viewing these. Um, so I think, you know, I think my, my kind of message would be keep doing what you're doing because I just think it's so fresh and so wonderful. And, um, you know, it is like a breath of fresh air actually, Daryl, you know, it, what you bring, um, because it, I think, you know, I need to sit and look through this every now and again, just to think, yeah, you, you, this is possible and that's possible. And we do get so stuck in our ways. I think, you know, it's so easy to get stuck in, stuck in a sort of, you know, a narrow, narrow view of what we do. And um, I, I love the way that both you and Adolfo and everyone that you you know, there is this idea of, you know, you can do anything really, you can bring all sorts of things together. So um, yeah, just keep, keep doing it. Don't give <laughs> up. <laughs> Thank you, I will. <laughs> and good luck with the book, because I know that is, that's hard work, because it's, you know, it's, it's, a, it's quite solitary, isn't it? It's just you yeah. and, the, and the keyboard. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Like we that's locked down afforded me a bit of time for research. That's been nice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but listen, thank you so much for putting yeah. this together yeah, for thank us. You. Thank you, Daryl. Yeah. yeah, yeah. It's lovely to have such a different different aspect of our of our our world, sort of, you know, and, and doing what you do. Yep. Paula Real says, love the projects and thank you. So yeah, lots of very happy people that you've wow. you've brought the message to tonight. Thanks for having me and thanks okay. for being Right. Hope to see you soon. Take care. Bye. All the best. Bye. And bye, everybody else. Bye.